welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. Today's topic is protecting your brain's blood vessels with my top three recommendations. When we talk about the vascular system, which we also call the circulatory system, we really think about it in two ways, that below the neck is the cardiovascular system and above the neck is the cerebrovascular system. This is a system of organs that includes, of course, the heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. One easy way to think about it is that arteries move the blood away, A artery, A away from the heart and that veins carry the blood to the heart. And of course, this is a very complex interconnected system. In the brain, we really rely on blood vessels to circulate and transport the critical fuels that we need to do everything, to stay alive, to think, to feel, to perceive. And these are oxygen, glucose, and of course, a myriad of other micronutrients. When blood vessels are healthy, they have four qualities, and this is what we want to promote as we get older. The first one is that they are open and they allow for the free movement of blood throughout this network. Second thing is they are flexible and they are elastic, which helps the blood flow increase or decrease depending on the demands of what we're doing at any given time. The third property is that they are smooth, they are strong. This will help the blood move freely without any obstruction. And the fourth quality is that they are coordinated and interconnected. And what we mean by this is that they really work as a team in order to allow the blood into the cells of the body and carry the deoxygenated blood back Back to the heart. The main issue that happens in aging due to diseased blood vessels is that we have stroke spectrum disorders, which is that this goes all the way from a ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke all the way up to the white matter disease that we've talked about in previous lectures. So within strokes, ischemic strokes make up about 80% of strokes. And this is when something, a blood clot, a fatty deposit blocks the flow of blood to a part of the brain. Hemorrhagic strokes happen in about 20% of people when a blood vessel bursts or when a weakened blood vessel leaks blood back into your brain. The most common that we see in hemorrhagic strokes is intracerebral and subarachnoid. We also have silent strokes or mini strokes. This is the kind where you didn't even know you had it. Maybe you were asleep. Maybe it didn't result in any symptom that you were consciously aware of, but you had a brain scan, a CT or an MRI for something else. And the doctor tells you, hey, we found a small stroke. It can be very alarming because sometimes the way the doctors portray it is, oh, it's nothing to be worried about. But you're sitting there thinking like, wait, I've had a stroke. We also have a TIA, a transchemic uh, transient ischemic attack, which is a fleeting type of a stroke experience. But the key here that most people get wrong is that it doesn't leave any permanent damage. So if you had a TIA, the T is the most important part. It means the symptoms came and then they went almost always under an hour. There is one most important risk factor that you need to know to keep your blood vessels healthy as you get older, and that is blood pressure, hypertension. Oftentimes the damage happens slowly, decades over time, but all of a sudden, in an instant, we actually see the consequences. And this happens because slowly, over many, many, many years, we're having a narrowing of the blood vessels, usually from cholesterol, which forces our heart to have to pump harder and push the blood from the heart to the network of arteries and veins. And this is essentially what high blood pressure is. This increase in the force causes frictions in the lining of our blood vessels, which over time causes damage in the form of small little tears. And the problem is then once we have some cholesterol in our system, more than we need for our normal biological functions, the fatty tissue of the cholesterol in the form of plaques can get caught in these spaces left from the tears and then turn into calcium deposits, which causes the arteries to lose their plasticity and they lose some of those essential healthy qualities I told you about. They become hard, they get thickened, they further narrow. The top three recommendations that I have for you for healthy blood vessels in your brain is as follows. And the truth is, as we talk about these, the health of your brain is really only as healthy as your arteries are. So these are actually very serious. The first one is to simply be more physically active. Walking is a wonderful brain healthy exercise. When we walk, we are boosting the blood flow to the brain and improving our overall circulation in our vascular system, even in patients who already have been diagnosed with coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, people who've had heart attacks and strokes, 
folks, we can get their blood vessels to go back to a little bit more of a state of smoothness when we introduce low impact exercises. So at least 30 minutes a day is what we aim for for blood vessel health in the brain. Doesn't have to be all at one time. You can build up five minutes here, two minutes here, 10 minutes here. Just at least try to be getting 30 minutes. If you're already doing that, we always wanna try to be moving the bar up for brain health. The brain loves novelty, it loves uniqueness, it loves to not get into an autopilot type situation. So anything you can do to increase and add diversity to what you're doing is wonderful for the brain overall. Number two is to eat more fiber, eat more soluble fiber. Dietary fiber has been shown to have a very protective effect against vascular disease. Studies have shown that most of us do not get anywhere near the intake of uh, fiber, insoluble fiber specifically, that uh, we, we really need in order to to be able to function optimally, not just from a gut health perspective, but from a brain health perspective as well. So this includes whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. So of course we've got soluble, insoluble. The one that we really like for brain health is the soluble because it's much more easily fermentable by the good gut bacteria and has some prebiotic functions as well. And over time, what we want is the good quality food we eat to stick around long enough to go through a fermentation process to produce those essential and sought after short chain fatty acids. That's really the key of fiber in, from a brain health perspective is it just basically keeps the good stuff you're eating sticking around long enough to actually go through its natural organic breakdown process. So your brain and all of the brain cells that exist in the gut, which there are millions, will be able to use it properly for energy production. So when we absorb short chain fatty acids, not only is it good for our brain health, our cognitive health, we also know that it decreases cholesterol synthesis in the liver, which overall decreases blood cholesterol. So that's fabulous. The third one is to hydrate. Water is crucial in almost every biological function, including vascular health. Helps to maintain the perfect viscosity of our blood. We don't want our blood to be too thick. We don't want it to be too thin. If it's too thick, we can get clots. If it's too thin, we can get hemorrhaging. Water helps us reach that ideal medium, helps the blood flow freely. Thick blood often comes along with dehydration, which not just increases your risk of getting a clot, but also insufficiency. Low blood pressure is also a problem as well. So you wanna make sure you're drinking at least eight cups of water per day. And don't also just prioritize water. Think about eating high water content fruits and vegetables, things like cucumber, melons, peppers. These things have a ton of water in them and they stick around a little bit longer than water. Blood vessel damage, as I told you before, often accumulates over time. But when the dam breaks, when the emergency happens, you have to remember that time is brain and teaching you about the warning signs of stroke is something that is important to me. And I want you to use the acronym B fast b e f a s t so b stands for balance e stands for eyes f is face a is arms s is speech and t is time time is brain is a really important thing to get inside your head because oftentimes we have we still carry these stereotypes of what is a stroke right we think of someone's half of their face going flaccid we think of someone who's unable to talk but many strokes don't have those symptoms at all. Many people do have significant vertigo. They have a terrible, terrible headache. Their eyes are deviating to the left. We really wanna to try to get more public awareness about these back of the brain type strokes, which is where you find the B and the E. Oftentimes you see FAST as the acronym for stroke, but we really wanna promote the more modern much more inclusive. We'll catch a lot more people if we get the public to appreciate that the balance and the eyes also can be significant warning signs. So I have become, of course, as a neuropsychologist, very interested in stroke recovery over the years that I've been practicing and became frustrated with the lack of science-based information that patients had access to in terms of recovery. So a few years ago, I wrote the I Care For Your Brain Top 10 Rules of Rehab. This is the interactive stroke guide, and we are putting it on sale. We want it to be a lot more, we want this information to be a lot more accessible to more people. So we have an electronic version and we have a paper version that we mail to people's house. So what I want you to do is go onto our website, which is icareforyourbrain.com, but you put in the initials. So icfyb.com 
backslash guide, G-U-I-D-E. And that's where you're gonna find all about the sale. We're basically cutting things in half because we are really, really wanting to move this information all throughout the world. People have, we've sold thousands of these guides. They've been through pretty, every major continent, all throughout the United States, of course, all throughout Canada, through Europe. If you're somewhere where shipping becomes a little bit cost prohibitive, just get the e-version and you'll immediately get it into your mailbox in a PDF form. It has lots of things in it that I'm really, really proud of. It's about 120 pages. It's everything I know about stroke recovery put into one guide. It's interactive, which means that you actually make it your own. So brain recovery, brain recommendations are interesting in that they are both universal where many things will be positive for everyone, but we also have a very strong need to personalize brain health care. And that's in, in balancing those two demands, that's where we came up with the idea to make it interactive, where you actually write your history in this book, you bring it to your doctor with you. It's something that's really meant to be an advocacy tool. So you get the rehab that you desperately need in the quickest amount of time. There's so much of stroke recovery that comes down to I don't know what I don't know. And so we've put it all in this guide here. So there's no more questions. There's no more wondering if you've done everything. Everything that would need to be done is within the covers of this stroke recovery guide. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.